So, uh, Bismillah, let me start with the first question. Uh, it says, uh, as it is said to recite more Quran than usual um, during the month of Ramadan, my question is, uh, should we focus only um, and just reciting, only on reciting the Quran, or should we study tafsir and do memorization of the Quran uh, in Ramadan as well? Okay, this is uh, an excellent question. Um, the the uh, the month of Ramadan, yes, it is known as uh, the Shahr al Quran, the month of the Quran, uh, for the very reason that um, the the Quran was revealed uh, in Ramadan. Uh, also, we know that the Prophet Sallam would review the Quran with the angel Jibril every uh, Ramadan from beginning to end, and in the year that the Prophet Sallam passed away, he reviewed the Quran twice. Uh, and so it has been the practice of the Prophet ﷺ and the companions after him uh, to pay uh, special attention to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the month of Ramadan. Now, uh, unfortunately, uh, there are many people who uh, have their relationship with the Qur'an is just um, memorizing the Qur'an. And sometimes this is more of a cultural issue where we're taught uh, that the memorization of the Qur'an uh, is the most important thing, or just the recitation, and if Arabic is not our native language and we may not uh, understand Arabic, and, and sometimes, by the way, this is not just for people who are not Arab. Um, even Arabs sometimes, uh, they may speak Arabic, uh, but their dialect of Arabic uh, can differ from uh, classical Arabic uh, or Fusha, what is known as the Arabic of the Quran. And so even somebody who is born into an Arab household and they speak Arabic, they may not have a great understanding of the meanings uh, of the Qur'an. So sometimes, as I said, there's an emphasis on just reading the Qur'an or just memorizing the Qur'an. Now, when it comes to having a relationship with the Qur'an, and that's what our goal is, inshallah ta'ala, to have a relationship with the Qur'an. What does it mean to have a relationship with the Qur'an? Um, I'm going to mention five or six things uh, that we should try and focus on uh, in the month of Ramadan, inshallah ta'ala. Number one is uh, al-qira'a, which is recitation. And that, I think, most people, uh, they do focus on that. Um, we know that simply reciting the Qur'an, uh, we are rewarded for it. The Prophet ﷺ said that whoever recites uh, a letter from the Book of Allah will, get, will, will receive a good deed. Uh, and the Prophet ﷺ said, I'm not saying, uh, he said um, that uh, alif, lam, mim is not one letter, rather alif is a letter, mim is a, uh, lam is a letter, and mim is a letter, meaning every single letter of the Qur'an that we recite, uh, we receive reward for that. So the other extreme, by the way, is people who say like, uh, don't recite the Qur'an, don't memorize the Qur'an, just, just look at the meanings of the Qur'an, which is the other extreme. And it should not be all or nothing. It shouldn't be just one or the other. And that's why I'm going to mention about five or six things here. Uh, but one of them, yes, just the recitation within of itself is important as well, even if we're not understanding anything. If we don't understand a single word of what we're reciting, just the act of reciting the Qur'an, uh, intrinsically it has reward in it. So yes, that should be part uh, of our relationship with the Qur'an. So that's number one, al-qira'ah. Uh, number two, um, scholars, they say al-itqan, which is proficiency of the Qur'an, which is working on becoming uh, proficient in the Qur'an, that is basically trying to better uh, our recitation of the Qur'an and to try to better our pronunciation of the letters and the words and tajweed and all of that. That is what is known as itqan or, or, or al-itqan, being proficient in the Qur'an. Uh, it doesn't mean you have to be proficient, but what it means is that you make an effort uh, to be proficient uh, in the Qur'an. And we know, as Prophet told us, that a person who struggles with the recitation of the Qur'an, meaning a person who is not proficient with the Qur'an, a person who struggles, uh, the Prophet ﷺ told us that he has a, or she has a, uh, an added reward, meaning not only do they have their, the reward of reciting the Qur'an, but all the struggle that they go through, they're rewarded for that as well. So even if we're struggling with the Qur'an, we are rewarded uh, for that very struggle, even if we're not proficient, but working towards uh, proficiency in reciting uh, the Qur'an. Uh, number three, uh, so we said al-qira'a, uh, al-itqan, and number three is khushu'a. Khushu'a is really presence of the heart, or we can say presence of the heart uh, and, and, and the mind, right? So we don't want to have a relationship with the Qur'an where our hearts and minds are not present, because really um, part of the Qur'an and the, the reason why the Qur'an was sent 
Yes, it was sent for recitation, but also it was sent for us to learn and understand the meanings uh, of the Qur'an. And khushu'a can only be developed um, when we learn and understand the meanings of the Qur'an, which is what I will get to, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, so khushu'a, developing khushu'a, developing the presence of our heart, uh, the presence of our mind when reciting the Qur'an. Uh, number four, uh, al-tadabbur, al-tadabbur. Uh, which is basically contemplation uh, of the Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ Quran That do they not ponder or do they not reflect upon the Qur'an أَمْ عَلَى قُلُوبٍ أَقْفَالُهَا Or are there locks upon their hearts? And here, this is an, a question by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to wake us up, to help us understand that if we're not if we're not uh, contemplating the Qur'an, that if we're not reflecting upon the Qur'an, then we're not truly benefiting, we're not properly benefiting from the Qur'an. So part of, of, uh, of, of having a relationship with the Qur'an is being able to, or is reflecting uh, upon uh, the Qur'an. And a prerequisite for that is obviously um, what I said earlier, uh, al-fahm, which is uh, fahm, which is understanding the Qur'an. So working towards understanding the Qur'an. How do we understand the Qur'an? Well, for some of us, yeah, that means looking up the meanings of the Qur'an and uh, looking up the tafsir of the Qur'an to properly understand the message that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving to us. That's how we will develop khushu'a, what I spoke about earlier. And also, that is what will lead to this point, point number four of tadabbur, tadabbur al-Qur'an, which is reflecting upon uh, the Qur'an. We don't want that our hearts be like they are locked up, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, are there locks upon the heart? Meaning, the Qur'an needs to penetrate our hearts. And how will it penetrate the Qur'an if we do not reflect upon the Qur'an? Now, a lot of times people ask me, how do you reflect upon the Qur'an? What does it mean? Or some people will say, look, I'm not a scholar. I, don't, I cannot do tafsir of the Qur'an. I have to be very clear here. There is a very big difference. There's a clear difference between tafsir and tadabbur. No one is asking you to do tafsir, nor should you be doing tafsir. Tafsir should be done by those people who are qualified, those people who are educated in the deen and who are educated uh, in the Qur'an to do tafsir. Tafsir goes into things like, what is Allah saying here? Why did Allah say it? Uh, what circumstances did Allah mention this ayah in? All of that comes under tafsir and that comes with knowledge. Tadabbur happens after the knowledge, meaning once we understand, once the tafsir is done, we understand what Allah is saying, then we can do tadabbur. So tadabbur is different, is separate than tafsir. No one is asking you to do tafsir, go look up the tafsir, go look up the interpretation and the meanings and the message of the Qur'an. Do that, leave that to the scholars, but look it up. Once you know the meaning of the Qur'an, do tadabbur. Tadabbur is taking the meanings of the Qur'an and asking yourself, how does this relate to my life? How does this affect my life? What role does it play in uh, my life? So, uh, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, uh, ma al, uh, ma al yusra, that with hardship comes ease. Okay, so we have the qira'ah of it, we recite it. We wanna make sure we recite it in the best possible way. Um, we wanna develop uh, and tadabbar. We want to reflect upon the Quran. We have to first understand what it means. So when Allah says in al usri yusra that with hardship comes ease, that means, and this can go into the meaning and the tafsir of the Quran, that when Allah gives hardship, Allah also gives ease with it. That is the tafsir. That is the understanding. Also, part of the tafsir is that when Allah brings hardship, that always attached to that hardship is ease. I mean, ease is connected to it. Ma'a. Allah said with inna certainly. With the hardship is the ease, meaning they're not separate, they'll be connected. After a hardship, there comes ease, either in this life or in the afterlife. So that is now we have understood the Qur'an, we know the meanings of the Qur'an, we've recited the Qur'an. Tadabbur means we say, in my life, now that I understand that, that verse, in my life, how does this apply? Well, I'm going through this difficulty and that difficulty and this hardship. Tadabbur of the Qur'an means I say, okay, so how do I apply this to my life? Well, this gives me solace, it gives me comfort, because as difficult as things are right now, there is ease that is attached to it, meaning relief is going to come. 
Maybe not in this life, but maybe in the afterlife. Also, part of uh, the tafsir of this ayah, which I forgot to mention, is that the, the yusr that Allah has mentioned, part of that yusr is a reward, right? The reward we get for going through a hardship and being patient. So, once again, the tabur means, okay, I'm going through this hardship, whatever that particular hardship is to you, and you say, I know this is hard, but I know that if I'm patient with this hardship, then certainly there's yusr with it. Part of that yusr is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward me for that ease that I am going through. And so that is what we're talking about when we say tadabbur uh, al-Qur'an, reflecting upon the Qur'an. Number five, hifz al-Qur'an, memorization of the Qur'an. And yes, that is part of it as well. Um, we should make an effort in the month of Ramadan as we're making the effort to recite and to reflect upon the Qur'an, we should make an effort to memorize the Qur'an as well. This doesn't mean you have to memorize 10 surahs of the Qur'an or a juz of, or two juz of the Qur'an or three juz. That's not what we're saying here. But what I'm saying is that you should make an effort to memorize something of the Qur'an, even if it is one ayah, even if it is small ayat of the Qur'an, but regularly memorizing and making a schedule for ourselves that we will add to our uh, memorization of the Qur'an. And if we memorize the Qur'an, obviously the Hufal know this, that for them a lot of times it's review of the Qur'an, right? Review and strengthening of what they have uh, memorized. Um, the Prophet Sallallahu he says, certainly the one uh, who, who doesn't have anything of the Qur'an in their heart is like an abandoned, uh, abandoned house or a ruined house meaning we all want something of the Qur'an. It doesn't mean you have to be a hafiz of the Qur'an, but what it means is that we should be making an effort to memorize something of the Qur'an, even if it's something very little or very small. Uh, so we said al-hifz al-Qur'an, uh, hifz al-Qur'an. Number six, and this is the last point I'll mention, uh, is uh, al-amal wa tatbiq This is acting and implementing the Qur'an into our lives. So... This is part of reflecting upon the Qur'an, as I mentioned earlier, but this is now the practical aspect of, um, uh, of living with the Qur'an. Meaning we take the message of the Qur'an and we apply it into our lives. And that was the methodology, that was the way of the companions. Uh, one of my favorite narrations that I mentioned a lot, subhanAllah, um, uh, is the narration of uh, Ibn Umar radiallahu an who said, it took me four years to memorize Surah Al-Baqarah. Um, and I often compare this to the Hufal that we have today. Um, Surah Al-Baqarah, um, some of you may know this, but it's, it's about two and a half juz of the Qur'an. Um, for, for, a, for somebody who is memorizing the Qur'an, to memorize two and a half juz, for somebody who's, who's like really good at memorizing, they could do it um, very quickly. There's people who memorize the whole Qur'an in, in, in two years, right? But in the whole Qur'an in two years, they're hafal that will, and even less, I've heard of hafal uh, who have memorized the whole Qur'an in less than two years. Ibn Umar, who was a, 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 a sahabi, he was a, a knowledgeable sahabi, he was a scholar amongst the sahaba, he had a very high rank, he said it took me four years to memorize just two and a half juz of the 30 juz of the Qur'an. Why? He said because I would never pass a single verse of Surah Al-Baqarah except that I would implement it into my life. Subhanallah. This is why it took him so long. He said, I'm not going to move on. I'm not going to memorize another ayah until I've implemented I can test it. On the day of judgment, I can come and say, Oh Allah, I heard the message and I applied it in my life. And because of that, he said it took me four years to memorize Surah Al-Baqarah. And that's why we, I don't believe we should be in a hurry, especially as adults. Children, it's another matter, right? Children... Uh, we should encourage them to memorize as much as possible, obviously, to the best of their ability, and we don't want to pressure them. But children, you know, is a different issue. But as adults, um, I don't believe we should be in a hurry just to memorize the Qur'an if we're not benefiting from the message of the Qur'an, if we're not uh, doing tatbiq, if we're not implementing uh, the message of the Qur'an. Yes, we should memorize, as I said, but part of that memorization should be implementation of the Qur'an. Ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, once again, famous companion, he said, it was difficult for me to memorize the Qur'an, but it was easy for me to act upon the Qur'an. And subhanAllah, in our times, the, it is the opposite, right? We find it easy to memorize the Qur'an, um, but difficult to act upon it, right? But uh, we want to go back to the way of the companions and their relationship uh, with, the, with the Qur'an. So, 
to review if you didn't uh, if you didn't catch all of them we said number one al uh, qira'a recitation of the quran number two uh, itqan to 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 work to be proficient in in our in our recitation of the quran um khushu' developing the presence of heart and presence of mind uh, with the quran we said that happens when we uh, learn and understand the meanings of the Quran when we look up the tafsir of the Quran, which is definitely a part of what we should be doing. Um, uh, tadabbur, we said number four, tadabbur, reflecting upon the Quran. Number five, hifz al Quran, um, memorizing uh, the Quran. And lastly, which is not a last point, but this is and this is not in uh, in in uh, in order of importance. This is all together. We should be doing all of this. Uh, is uh, tatbiq, is implementation uh, of the Quran and Allah subhanahu wa taala knows best. Uh, sorry for a long answer to that, that question. It's just that uh, that question is an excellent question because uh, it is very relevant to the month of Ramadan. And Alhamdulillah, we know that in the month of Ramadan, it may, it may become easier uh, for us to work towards bettering our relationship with Allah. And so this is an excellent time to build a relationship with the Quran that will hopefully continue with us uh, even after the month of Ramadan and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, knows best.